Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Now, this book, I hate to even say the title of this book. It says Hellstrip. Well, I don't like the, that term. I've never used that term. I've never grew up with it. But Hellstrip gardening is all about gardening on a boulevard. Now, first of all, you have to understand that I have seen some of the best boulevard gardens ever. In fact, one of the nicest ones I've ever seen was on the Buffalo Garden Tour last year or the year before. And I saw it, and it is spectacular. And I learned one of the secrets to doing it was that she could never quite make up her mind where the best place for the plant was. So what she would do is she would pot the plant, and then she would move it around through the garden till she found the spot where she really liked it or where it seems to work or blend in with the other plants. And since this was a very well-established garden, it was probably a good way to do it. So you may want to start with your basics and then go and do that as well. Now, Hellstrip Gardening is... Uh, a book by Evelyn J. Hayden. And uh, it's an excellent book. I like it because, A, it's got lots of pictures and examples. It uh, obviously addresses the whole point that it could be illegal in your town. So you do have to basically address it. And so you're going to have to check with your local bylaws. Now, and some bylaws are being changed as we speak in order to allow you to plant other things in your front gardens. I know the city of St. Catharines here is starting to review uh, the idea of putting a vegetable garden in your front yard, which, to be honest with you, I totally disagree with. I've yet to see a beautiful vegetable garden. Now, I have seen a, ve a beautiful gardens where vegetables have been used as accent and specimen plants between other plants, flowers, flowering shrubs, and evergreens, etc. Even mixed in with a few edible plants and edible flowers makes it really quite attractive. But to go and put uh, a vegetable garden just as we normally plant them in the front yard? No, I don't think so. So this, I think, is the best way. It can be made beautiful. You have to deal with a few things, which is, of course, the type of plant material that will do well in your soil. The soil in this area is usually compacted. It is usually second quality. In other words, it was from left there from building the road or the sidewalks. It has a lot of heat bounce from sidewalks and asphalt in your roads. You've got a lot of salt. Uh, you've got a lot of pollution from passing cars, and of course, the passing vehicles also create wind. So they're very drying. So you have to deal with all of these. So your selection of plant material, this book will actually help you with. So choosing the plant material comes under part three, because it covers a lot of the other things that you need to do ahead of time. In other words, choosing the right plants, is not the first thing, but soil prep is. A way to actually wa water this boulevard strip, as I grew up knowing it. It's not the easiest thing to look after. Very often, a lot of homeowners think of it as, why do I have to look after it when it's city property? Not realizing that the probably most of their front yards in the modern suburbs are actually city property as well. With setbacks of much as least 30 feet, so from the center of the road 30 feet back, the city owns it. So go and look for where your water shutoff is. It's usually a good indication where you actually have ownership of the property beyond that. And uh, the city actually owns, in my case, the first 18 feet of my lawn and my gardens. So that's what you have to understand. So you may as well make this look good. You can plant shrubs, evergreens, and different plants. Now, this book covers the wide array of plant material, 
for different zones. But one of the things I liked about it was that it gave you the specific zones. It gave you the idea that certain plants are more tolerant of certain conditions. And I think this is important, that you realize that this is supposed to be beautiful, low maintenance, so you're not putting out the most expensive exotic plants that need extra tending. You're looking for reliable, dependable, tough plants for the conditions that exist in your boulevard. So this book covers all of that. It covers uh, suggestions on hardiness zones, metric conversions for those of you who need that. A lot of gardens are also pictured here from across the country. And what it does, it gives you an inspiration of what you can and cannot do in your area. So if you live in Portland or Minnesota, San Francisco, Boulder, Colorado, Buffalo, New York, Seattle, Minneapolis, Charlotte, Boston, Orlando, Shoreview, Minnesota, and Berkeley, California, there are gardens pictured in this book from those areas. That sort of helps to inspire you. It covers living with the wildlife that's in there. Uh, road maintenance and utility problems. Also, with dealing with watering and with the public and public perceptions. Also, uh, poor soils, trees, and, of course, vehicles. So, all of this is covered in a very good, well-written book. Easy to read. Lots and lots of color pictures for inspiration. And lots of good technical information that you're going to need for your hell strip gardening or boulevard gardening as I better know it. So pick up the book by Evelyn J. Hayden, uh, Hell Strip Gardening. It is uh, from Timber Press and I'll give you the ISBN number which is 978-1-60409. Three three two dash four. That'll help you to find the book at your local bookstore, or contact Timber Press, and they'll tell you who is actually retailing it in your area. So, take it in. Think about this. This can add a lot of beauty to the front of your home, without adversely affecting the grass and turf areas that can still be used to cool the environment, provide healthy, active, growing, living soil, and at the same time, provide a great place for kids to play as well. So open space with great gardens on all sides, not just that strip down the front of your foundation, but others, and even make that boulevard of yours far more functional. I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week.